Hello and welcome to the third part of our hedgerow survey series in which we are going to transfer the data from our paper that we used for the survey onto OpenStreetMap. You don't have to do this step, but it is a crowdsourced geodatabase and the more people participate and contribute, the better it gets. And I will show you one of the examples in the fourth and last part of the video series of how it is useful to have more people contribute. So let's dive right in. I have the field paper filled in now and I have all my species or my genus -sises. Um I think the plural is genus because it's you declination. I'm not quite sure. Geni? Not sure. Um, I have them all on a list and I could scan in the field paper page and it would turn up as a background layer in OpenStreetMap. But I don't think it's terribly useful. Uh, I don't have a scanner. I could probably try to take a picture but I doubt that will work. Um, if you do do that, if you do scan it or take a photograph, you upload it here. And the QR code that is on the field paper page will help locate it within OpenStreetMap. But I will just work with the papers in front of me and will um, use a combination of low tech and high tech, I suppose which means that I have to find where I went for the survey. So it's this area. Um, you see again, we have lovely field names mapped already. So let's start with number two, which is here, this hedge here. Um, for op if you do it on OpenStreetMap, you can just go and be happy with what you have on paper. But if you want to contribute these species or genesis um, to OpenStreetMap, you will have to probably first map the hedge, which is easily done. You pick the line tool at the top. Obviously, you have to have an OpenStreetMap account and all that. But I can't go through all the basics here. I have done videos about that. So you choose the line tool and draw the hedge along here. Hit the escape key and then you can type into the search hedge or HED. Hedge will come up. That's your hedge mapped when you've saved it. But of course we want to add the what's growing in the hedge. So as I said, you have to decide if you want to go for genus or species because this is when it becomes important. Um, I said I was going to go for genus only. And you have to make up your mind about the language. I will use the English language. So I have to use genus colon en. And then I type in the, but in common usage, you would call a name, but it's not, it's a genus. And they all start with the capital letter. So that's important. So the first one would be Hawthorne. And because it's a good hedge, it has several species, genus, sorry, several um, different types of plants um, in it. You have to separate them by semicolon. Um, so we have hawthorn, ivy, semicolon, blackberry, semicolon, and allegedly slow. I think it might have actually been willow. I Maybe I'll leave that out. Um, so that's number two done. If I wanted to add the Latin to it as well, I would use, either you have written it down or you look it up beforehand and maybe have a little table there on your sheet of paper, but you can use Wikidata. And if I looked up Hawthorne, it should say genus of plants, so Crategus. Um, and I could use that, and that would be just genus. D there's no Latin um, name tag for that. So it's just genus is the default is the Latin one. Uh, IV, type that in. See there it says species of plant, but we want the genus, so go to that. It's Hedera or something. I'm not going to do that for every hedge now. Um, black, was it blackberry? Yes. Uh, 
It's uh, Rubus, I think. If you can't find the genus, um, you just use the first word in the species, which it also doesn't seem to have. Might have to go on the full page and see if you find it there. So I've looked this up before and it didn't look like... Well, maybe it is. See the... It doesn't actually seem to be... No, it's a... It's actually a mulberry. That's what it is. Black mulberry. I could have just read the English, couldn't I? Uh, yeah, so that's not what we want. Um, It's the black mulberry and there's also a white mulberry, I think. So it must be rubus. And we'll see if, if it's just rubus. See what comes up there. Yeah, that looks more like a blackberry. So it is rubus. So it's not always quite as um, straightforward. And we left out the slow because I actually think it was a type of willow. What you could also do then, delete that semicolon because we don't need it. And um, we could also add the wiki data to it. Genus wiki data. So you have to look them all up again. We have the rubus still here and you use this number here, the Q and then the number. So this string, maybe in the same, um, same order. Because if you add the Wikidata, Wikidata already has the names in all kinds of languages. So if someone wanted to make a map of all the species or genesis in a hedge and wanted to offer that in several languages, all they needed is get the Wikidata entry of OpenStreetMap and Wikidata would automatically translate it if you get what I'm trying to say. So that's, that's the beauty of Wikidata. But I'm still not going to do that for all the hedges here. Just for this one. And then we move on to, let's say, number seven, which is uh, this one here. I'm not going to go all the way around. So there's your hedge. If you're wondering what this little thing is, that's a milk churn stand that is hidden in the hedge. It's very hidden now. Not a good season to survey milk churn stands because they're all overgrown, but a good season to survey hedges. So number seven, um, we have Hawthorne again. Oh, genus in Hawthorn, Blackberry. Elder, Ivy and Hazel. So there's a bit more variety in that one. Well, it is about three times as long. So you would expect that. And you'll see that later on, there's a longer hedge that has even more species in it. So that was number seven. Number eight then, and I presume it's the one behind the stream. Number eight has... Genus in Blackberry Elder. It's all quite repetitive. So dog rose, as I said, is the species, so I have to go with rose. Um that was quick. Number three is this year. It's a bit doubtful if it's actually a hedge or if it's maybe a tree row. Because they were quite tall. And it was the usual, oh, number three, sorry. Hawthorn, Elder, and Ivy. 
and then number four and you see we already have the the farmland here and the head should be the outer edge of that farmland and I might have to adjust that a little bit. So up to here is the hedge and I just go along where the farmland is already defined. Might have to adjust the road a wee bit. Okay and then highlight the hedge again and add Janice, that is number four, blackberry, ivy, rose, hawthorn, ash, and blackthorn. I actually made a point of looking at this tree here. I'm adding that so you either go up to the point in the menu and add the point to the hitch or just undo that or you can just double click and that'll automatically add a point and then you type in tree and it gives you that symbol and you can add the genus there as well which is ash. So that was number four then we have here is actually more fins Barbed wire fence, so I just draw the line and then type in fence. And under type, I could look for barbed wire and add that. And then I should probably bring the farmland out to the fence. So that's that fence and then number six is here. I remember there was a lot of hazel. Number six, hazel. I couldn't go in much, of course, because there's a stream there. It's just what I could see from afar. Hawthorn and ash again. And then that's that. Number five would be this here. There's a quite a bit of an embankment there, so it wasn't too easy to access. That down here. So number five, I have... That was the fairly long hedge, so I have loads. Hawthorn. Ivy, willow, um, grey willow, I'd said. Blackberry, oh, blackberry, black, would help if I could spell it. Berry, hazel again. It's only a very small spot around here. That was where the hazel was. Rose, blackthorn. Elder, Ash, and Honeysuckle. I was very happy to see that. I'm not sure if that's a genus though. Honeysuckle. It is a species. So, Honeysuckle mistletoe. Um, I'll see if... Sometimes um, they don't have an English name for the genus. Like here for example it seems that the Latin is used in English so I'm gonna have to use that. Pity that. Um, I might just press species in. Might just add the species here so it doesn't get lost. I might have to add all the species there which is gonna be difficult in retrospect because it's impossible for me to tell now what the species were. So that was number six and then just in contrast number nine is this one residential hedge and it only had beach and beach and ivy. As far as I remember. Oh, blackberry. Well, they always creep in. 
and there's also a wooden fence, so kind of have to use hedge and fence there. So that's that done. A couple of hedges added, and then of course we have to save that. Added hedge row data sources, very important. Survey. You could also add um, the height of hedges, um, which is important for certain things because some hedges are planted to um, to give shadow to animals or, I don't know, just, um, the way I cycle into town, I'm always happy that the hedges are very tall because I'm cycling in the shadow, which on a sunny day can be quite nice and cooling. And um, I'm not entirely sure how useful it is though, because sometimes the hedges are cut and then the height isn't as tall as that and you can't expect anyone really to go around and update all the heights of hedges all the time. That would be um, a lot of work if we can't even get house numbers done, which is much more important. And the data is already there, but it's just not visible yet, so you can't see the hedge rows. Now you can. So we have these green lines, the thinner green lines are hedges and the thicker ones are tree rows, which we didn't add today. And if you want to see the data, you'd have to zoom in a little bit, go to layers on the right hand side, click on that, the tree layers there, and activate the map data layer. And then you can try to click on the lines and it'll tell you on the left hand side what's in there. It's a bit difficult now to see what is a hedge and what is something else. But that's that's all there. Yeah. And if you knew how to do that, um, you could export the data using Overpass Turbo and let's say in QGIS make a map that color codes the hedges by how many species are in there, for example. That's just one um, application you could do or I don't know. I'm sure there's lots more you could do with that data that is now available for anyone to use in the whole world and for free. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in another video soon. Slange full.